Good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you can see my screen clearly. Yeah. Yes. So good evening. I would like to thank AIS and Professor Maripal Sastey with Professor Namrata Sharma for this opportunity. Today, my goal is to help explain the science behind the design of trifocal eye wells. Uh, in my presentation today, I will start by discussing the basics of diffractive optics, then explain their application in bifocal eye wells, then look at the evolution of optics from bifocal to trifocal eye wells, and finally discuss some of the unique properties of the ATD -Lisa trifocal eye well. In 1821, Augustine Fresnel, an engineer in the French army, developed a lens to help improve the visibility of lighthouses. Named after him, the Fresnel optic was a lens with some parallel blocks of glass removed, and it could collect most of the lamp's light and focus it towards the horizon. Diffractive eye wells it used today are a distant derivation from the same principle of Fresnel optics. Diffraction refers to various phenomena which occur when a wave encounters an obstacle or a slit. Due to diffraction, when we try to pass light through a very small hole, we will notice that it actually does not go in a straight line, but rather spreads out. The Huygens Fresnel principle states that every point of a wavefront can be thought of as being its own source of secondary so-called wavelets, subsequently spreading in a spherical distribution. Basically, this means that the planar wave is transformed into spherical waves after diffraction. Now the light waves incident on two slits will spread out and exhibit an interference pattern in the region beyond. Interference is the combination of two or more waves to form a composite wave. Interference can be destructive or constructive. Disruptive interference occurs when two waves have an opposite phase relation and effectively cancel each other out. And constructive interference is when two waves are in parallel phase relation and the resultant wave has twice the amplitude of each of the original waves. During diffraction, the first bright image occurring to either side is called the first order diffraction. So in diffractive multifocal eye wells, near vision is a result of the first orders of diffraction that are produced as a result of constructive interference produced as the waves spread beyond the eye well. A diffractive presbyopia correcting eye well is simply a combination of a normal monofocal optic correcting for distance and a diffractive element providing addition for near. The diffractive element consists of numerous prism-shaped steps of varying width and height. The width of these steps helps determine the power of addition. The narrower the diffractive step, the greater the near addition. The wider the diffractive step, the lower the near addition. The width of these steps can be altered to choose between correction for near or intermediate vision. The height of the diffractive steps governs the modulation of light energy and essentially the orders of diffraction produced. Most bifocal eye wells distribute light such that 40% of light is directed towards infinity, 40% for near vision, and the remaining 20% is diffracted towards higher orders. And it is this 20% of light going towards higher orders of diffraction that is responsible for photic phenomena such as glare and halo experienced with these lenses. And since the second order diffraction would result in a near add of over six diopters, it would be too high to be clinically useful. By doubling the width of the steps, the power of addition for the first and second order could be halved, resulting in first and second order adds of 1.66 and 3.33 diopters respectively. And these powers would be very useful clinically for patients. However, the light energy would be only 4%, making the images too dim to be useful. So if we create two different diffractive optics where the respective first orders provide near and intermediate vision separately, and adjust the height of the steps so that light energy is optimally distributed, and then combine the two diffractive elements, you would actually have a trifocal eye well that corrects for near, intermediate, and distance, and with light energy distribution that makes the vision comfortable at all these distances. So when compared to a bifocal eye well, which provided only two foci at near and distance, we now have a lens that provides three clear foci for distance intermediate and near vision, greatly reducing the dependence on glasses. So a trifocal lens simultaneously focuses light for distance, intermediate, and near. And when implanted inside the eye, images from all three foci are being simultaneously displayed on the retina. Whenever there are multiple superimposed images on the retina, 
the brain always selects the clearer image and suppresses the blurred ones. This is a, the process of this is called neuroadaptation. The AT Lisa trifocal eye is a hydrophilic lens with a hydrophobic surface with plate haptics. It has a six millimeter optic and a six millimeter diffractive zone. It has a near add of 3.33 diopters and an intermediate add of 1.66 diopters. It utilizes the zeroth, first, and second orders of diffraction and also has an aspheric surface to help counter the corneal asphericity. Phase shifting zones are the junction between two adjacent diffractive steps. And through a unique manufacturing process, the phase zones in the AT visa are machined such that they do not have any right angles, significantly help reduce light scattering. The lens achieves very good light transmittance of 85.7% at all pupil sizes, helping improve contrast sensitivity. The AT Lisa is a refractive diffractive eyewell, where out of the total six millimeter diffractive zone, only the central 4.32 millimeter are trifocal, and the outer two millimeter region of the lens sends light to the far and near foci exclusively. So in scotopic situations, where an apodized bifocal eyewell would begin to lose out on near vision, the AT Lisa loses out on intermediate vision, but still doesn't compromise near vision. The lens distributes 50% of light for distance, 20% for intermediate vision, and 30% for near. And as already discussed earlier, the distribution for intermediate vision falls once the pupil enlarges beyond 4.3 millimeters. This graph shows that at a wide range of pupil sizes from three to five and a half millimeters, the lens still continues to provide three distinct focal points. Even trifocals with convoluted surfaces, where the steps are rounded and smoothened, there is a fall in both near and intermediate vision with increasing pupil sizes. And as mentioned earlier, unlike with an apodized surface, the AT Lisa's symmetric light distribution preserves near vision with increasing pupil size. Trifocals should be considered the lens of choice for all patients seeking independence from glasses after cataract surgery. And in the future, with further innovation in the design of the diffractive steps, as well as the manufacturing process of such eyewells, we can expect an even greater range of vision, improved contrast sensitivity, and minimal photic phenomena. Thank you.